जय हिंद एवरी वन माई नेम इज डॉक्टर पारुल वर्मा आई एम फ्रॉम अप्लाइड साइंस एंड ह्यूमेनिटीज डिपार्टमेंट अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज गाजियाबाद टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिलीवर लेक्चर ऑन आई आर स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी विच इज इन यूनिट टू ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट केमिस्ट्री द सब्जेक्ट कोड इज के एस वन जीरो टू टी एज वी ऑल नो स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इंजीनियरिंग केमिस्ट्री बिकॉज इट डील्स विद द it deals with the information about molecule their mole structures determination of functional group among ir spectroscopy we are discussing various type of spectroscopy in engineering chemistry syllabus out of which ir is important one because it deals with functional group of a compound it is we are going to uh, determine functional group of a compounds with the help of this spectroscopy this spectroscopy is also known as vibrational spectroscopy and it is also known as group spectroscopy because it is very useful in determining functional group of a compound so this spectroscopy is very basic in nature and it is very useful in the field of chem chemistry in the field of engineering chemistry so in today's lecture i am going to deliver that what is ir spectroscopy then basic principle of ir spectroscopy then we will calculate number of vibrational number of fundamental vibration and then we will uh, see that how many reasons are there in ir spectrum which we need to study let us start now so what is ir spectroscopy basically we have one electromagnetic spectrum of various region of, of light it means in electromagnetic spectrum in an electromagnetic spectrum the range of light varies in this particular spectroscopy as name indicates infrared spectroscopy or ir spectroscopy we are dealing with electromagnetic radiation of infrared region only it means the radiation which we are going to fall on a molecule is of ir region and as we all know that infrared light is very energetic radiation it means it can bring so many changes in the molecule and what will happen that when the light fall on a molecule and molecule show some changes molecule show some changes and these changes can be recorded these changes can be recorded in the form of spectrum and study of this kind of spectroscopy is known as study of this kind of spectrum is known as spectroscopy and when this spectrum is formed due to irradiation of ir region light this is particular spectrum is known as ir spectrum and this particular spectroscopy is known as ir spectroscopy now let us discuss that what are the various changes what are the various transition due to which this ir spectrum is going to form so there are number of changes we can say the changes may be in particular ir spectroscopy the changes may be vibrational the changes may be rotational the changes may be transitional and in ir spectroscopy one vibrational change is accompanied with is associated with so many small rotational and transitional changes it means the vibrational change occur in a particular molecule after irradiation of ir light is important one and when we study these kind of vibrational energy changes in a molecule in in ir spectrophotometer we will definitely going to get something important about the molecule and ir region lies between 4000 to 667 cm inverse it means it is a very high energetic radiation when this high energetic radiation fall on a molecule definitely in a molecule some changes occur and what are these changes i just told you 
these are vibrational energy changes. Now, something more about IR spectroscopy. IR spectroscopy measure vibration between bond. It measures vibrational frequencies in the molecule, which is useful to determine functional group. It means if I am having some compound whose functional group is unknown and I put this compound in infrared spectrophotometer and when I got this particular spectrum, I will, I can, I will be able to found functional group of that particular compound out of this spectrum. So, this is a very important study. If I am making some new compound and I do not know which functional group is going to form. After studying the spectrum of the IR spectrum of that particular compound, I can confirm that this is this compound. It means this compound which I formed, it is having this particular functional group. So, whenever we are making medicines, we need some specific functional group to be formed. So, it is very helpful in determining the functional group of a newly formed compound. So, basically IR spectra spectroscopy provide information on the functional group as well as the structure of a molecule. Now, discuss basic principle of IR spectroscopy. As we all know, when two molecule, when a molecule is there and in this molecule two atoms are there or a group of atom is there, this particular group of atom is attached with some bond and these bonds are having various strength. Some bonds are very strong, some bonds are particularly weak and is this bond is fixed? No, this bond is actually having spring like characteristic. This bond is actually having spring like characteristic. It means it is not rigid in nature, the atom moves, the atom moves, atom shows some movement. And because of this continuation movement of the atom in a particular molecule, some oscillation occurs. So, if this atom, if this atom moves like a spring, some oscillation occur, which is, which is responsible for the generation of oscillating electric field. So, whenever a molecule is there, which is made up of some group of atom, every bond is having some natural frequency of vibration. This kind of vibration is known as natural frequency of vibration. So, for example, if the molecule is CH3, CHO, in this various bond one can observe. One bond is we can say CH, another bond we can say C double bond O. So, each and every group of atom is going to vibrate because it is in a continuation of motion, it is in continuous motion. So, due to this movement, this bond, these bond are going to vibrate and the frequency by which it vibrate is known as natural frequency of vibration. And interestingly, we can calculate theoretically the vibrational frequency of all the molecule using Hooke's law. So, it is given in wave number here. Frequency can be calculated using Hooke law that is 1 upon 2 pi c under root k upon mu. Where c is velocity of light, k is force constant and mu is reduced mass. And we all know that reduced mass can be calculated using the formula m1 plus m2 where m1 into m2, where m1 and m2 are masses of atom present in a bond. So, if the bond is, if the bond is CH, we can calculate both the values K for single bond, force constant for single bond and mu that is reduced mass where M1 is the mass of carbon and M2 is the mass of hydrogen. So, we can calculate this reduced mass. So, if we have both the values for con force constant for a bond and reduced mass for a bond, we can easily calculate theoretically vibrational frequency, natural frequency of the molecule. So, the molecule when in a, in a molecule when the atom is going to vibrate in for a 
particular bond, we can easily calculate their natural frequency of vibration. Then what will happen to this natural frequency? Whenever the molecule is irradiated with higher reason light, this light is having specifically specific energy. Every radiation in an electromagnetic spectrum is having a specific range, specific frequency, specific energy. So, when IR fall on a molecule and some changes occurred in a molecule, changes occurred in a molecule and when these changes, these natural, these changes due to radiation of IR become equal to oscillating electric field of oscillating electric field of radiation oscillating electric field of molecule there occur phenomena phenomenon of resonance when this resonance occur when this resonance occur when the light fall on a molecule and its energy and its electric field become equal to the natural frequency of the molecule, the energy can be transferred from radiation to the molecule, it is known as absorption phenomena or vice versa, energy can be transferred from molecule to radiation, it is known as emission. So, whenever we have a molecule, it is made up of some atom and when we study the vibrational frequency in between atom, the IR reason light is having a specific energy associated with it and there is some natural frequency of molecule. So, when it matches applied infrared frequency matches with natural frequency of vibration, this phenomena of resonance occur and vibrational spectrum is formed. So, this will lead to a spectrum of vibration or we can say this will lead to the generation of IR spectra. So, whenever this happen that applied infrared frequency become equal to natural frequency of vibration, this phenomena occur and spectrum will be generated. You can observe in this molecule that whenever this is diatomic molecule and it vibrates like this, this diatomic molecule is vibrating. It means it is always having some natural frequency of vibration. So, if electric, electric radiation of IR matches with this natural vibration, the spectrum will be generated. Now, coming to a very important part of IR spectroscopy, are all molecules are IR active? All molecules can generate a spectrum of IR reason? All molecules are IR active? No. Some molecules are IR inactive and some molecules are IR active. So, what are IR active and inactive molecule? Symmetric molecule like O2, F2, H2, Cl2, they are IR inactive molecule. Why? Because in IR spectroscopy, vibration can be occurred when there is a change in dipole movement during vibration. Otherwise, this vibration does not occur and <coughs> in symmetrical molecule which do not absorb IVR radiation because it does not have any permanent dipole movement and after irradiation of light also it is not going to generate any dipole movement. So, the condition for IR absorption is that either the molecule is having some dipole movement in it, permanent dipole movement or the molecule will show some change in dipole movement during vibration. But those molecules which are not having dipole movement and do not absorb IR radiation <coughs> because they do not have dipole movement and also they are not going to show any change in dipole movement during excitation, during irradiation of IR light. Such molecules are completely IR inactive molecule. So, in one sentence we can say all symmetrical molecules, symmetrical diatomic molecules are IR inactive molecule, while 
डायटोमिक मॉलिक्यूल विच हैव परमानेंट डाइपोल मूवमेंट आर आई आर एक्टिव बिकॉज दे हैव डाइपोल मूवमेंट दे हैव फ्रीक्वेंसी जनरेटेड दे हैव वाइब्रेशन एंड वेन इट मैच द आई आर स्पेक्ट्रम विल फॉर्म मॉलिक्यूल्स विथ टू और मोर देन टू एटम दे पॉलीएटोमिक मॉलिक्यूल्स दे मे बी आई आर एक्टिव और दे मे नॉट बी आई आर एक्टिव इट्स ऑल डिपेंडिंग अपॉन दे आर चेंज इन डाइपोल मूवमेंट ड्यूरिंग वाइब्रेशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ इथीन इज द मॉलिक्यूल एंड इट इज हैविंग जीरो डाइपोल मूवमेंट बिकॉज ऑफ इट्स इमिट्रिकल स्ट्रक्चर इट इज हैविंग जीरो डाइपोल मूवमेंट एंड इट इज कंप्लीटली आई आर इन एक्टिव बिकॉज वेन आई आर लाइट फॉल्स ऑन दिस मॉलिक्यूल इट डज नॉट शो एनी चेंज इन इट्स डाइपोल मूवमेंट इट मीन्स नो डाइपोल मूवमेंट हैज बीन क्रिएटेड नाउ it is having zero dipole movement so due to this zero dipole movement this molecule is ir inactive but if the polyatomic molecule like ch3oh is there this is having dipole movement hence it is ir inactive molecule now coming to the point that what are the various type of vibration that can be observed that can be studied during ir spectroscopy so basically there are two major category of vibration one is known as stretching vibration another one is known as bending vibration the main difference between these two type of vibration is in stre stretching vibration bond length is going to change in stretching vibration bond length is going to change in bending vibration bond angle is going to change but bond length remain same so in stretching vibration bond length is going to change in bending vibration bond angle is going to change it means in short we can say that stretching vibration is a having spring like movement and it is not having spring like movement bending vibration so let us dis discuss with some example again stretching vibration are of two types so if we are taking example of triatomic molecule triatomic molecule for example ab2 ab2 so this is here the construction of ab2 molecule is shown where one atom is central to the whole molecule for example it is a it is b and it is b so this system become ab2 type of molecule so we are explaining i am going to explain all the type of vibration with by taking the example of ab type of molecule so in symmetric vibration with respect to central atom both the atom either get stretched at a time or get compressed at a time so there is a symmetry between stretching and compress compressing so uh, if stretching occurs both the atom with respect to central atom are going to stretch if compressing occur both the atom with respect to central atom are is going to compress this is known as symmetric type of stretching in asymmetric stretching with respect to central atom a one atom is going to stretch by this arrow it is shown that it is going to stretch and when atom is going to compress so this is known as asymmetric type of stretching so st st stretching vibration can be of two type one is symmetric stretching another one is asymmetric stretching now coming to next type of vibration which is known as bending vibration bending what do you mean by bending bending means something is going to bend and whenever something bend the bond angle is going to change so in this type of vibration no bond length is going to change bond length remain same by bond angle changes there are two types of bending vibration one is known as in plane bending vibration it means bond angle is going to change but plane does not changes plane remain same and again in plane vibration are of two type one is seizing and one is rocking seizing as name indicate seizure like motion so if if this is the molecule and this is central atom with respect to central atom these two hydrogen atom show seizing movement this is known as seizing bending vibration 
in rocking bending vibration, which is again an in-plane vibration, both the atom either moves towards right hand side or both the atom move towards left hand side. Both scissoring and rocking vibration, rocking bending vibration, plane is going to change. That's why I am going to explain these kind of vibration in 2D uh, blackboard, in 2D smartboard. In these vibration, plane does not change, plane remains same. And the next type of bending vibration are wagging and twisting. These are known as out of plane bending vibration. Out of plane bending vibration. Because in this, these kind of vibration, the plane changes. It means in both the, both wagging and twisting, the plane does not remain same. And what is the difference between wagging and twisting? In wagging, the moly with respect to central atom, the atoms either move outward to the plane or move inward to the plane. So, either they go below to the plane and or both the atom moves above to the plane. While in twisting, with respect to central atom, the one of the atom moves upward and one of the mat atom moves downward. It means one moves above the plane and one moves below the plane. So, movement like this is known as twisting, but movement like this is known as wagging. So, in wagging, both the atom either move up or down at the same time. In twisting, one atom move up and another atom move da down. Now, you can observe in this moving structures, this vibration is known as symmetrical stretching. As you can observe, the corner atom moves towards central atom, either they show stretching or they show compression. In this asymmetric stretching, you can observe one atom shows stretching, another atom shows compression at that time. In scissoring, you can observe the motion like scissor, like scissor. In rocking, you can observe both the atom either moves left hand side or moves right hand side. In wagging, you can observe, easily observe, the atom moves above the plane and below the plane at a time, either above the plane or below the plane. And this movement you can observe, one atom move above the plane and one atom move below the plane at a time. So, these are the various vibrational changes, these are the various types of vibrational changes occur in IR spectroscopy when the molecule is irritated with IR region of light and due to this various type of vibrational changes, the molecule will form spectrum and each and every molecule because these various type of vibration occurs each and every molecule show different IR spectrum useful in the identification of a compound. Another important question we studied that there are various type of vibration. We can also calculate number of vibrational changes occur in a molecule. There are two particular formulas. For linear molecule, the vibrational changes or we can say vibrational degree of freedom, it is also known as vibrational degree of freedom, can be calculated by 3n minus 5. For non-linear molecule can be calculated by 3n minus 6. Where n is number of atom in the molecule and what does this 5 and 6 means? I have told you in the beginning that IR is, IR spectrum is not only about vibrational uh, reason, uh, vibrational changes, it is showing some transitional changes and rotational changes. But the number of transitional changes and rotational changes in linear molecule are fixed as well as in non-linear molecule are fixed. In linear molecule, the total transitional changes are 3 in number the total rotational changes are 2 in number and 3 plus 2 become 5. So, if we can, if we are saying that E total is equal to E vibrational plus E rotational plus E transitional and if we need to calculate E vibrational because we are studying vibrational spectroscopy, we can say E total E vibrational, we can say E total minus E R plus E transitional. 
E T E transitional. So what we are calculating by the formula 3 n minus 5, we are calculating number of vibrational changes. So in the number of vibrational changes, the formula become total number of changes are 3 n depending upon the number of atom, n is number of atom. And for linear molecule, it is 3n minus 5. For non-linear molecule, it is, it is 3n minus 6. So, the number 5 and 6 remain fixed in linear as well as non-linear molecule. So, now taking example, for example, H2O. H2O is a bent molecule. It means non-linear in nature. The number of atom in H2O are 3. So, when 3n we will do, 3 into 3, it become 9. And the formula is 3n minus 6 for nonlinear molecule. So, when we put this formula, 9 minus 6 become 3. So, in H2O molecule, there are 3 total vibrational changes occur. If we calculate this for CO2 molecule, again the number of molecules are 3, the total number 3n, total number of changes are 9. And it is a linear molecule. You know very well that CO2 is a linear molecule. So, the formula become 3n minus 5. Total number of vibrational changes are 4. Are these all 4 vibrational changes are able to produce a spectrum? These are IR uh, active. Out of these 4 vibrational changes in CO2 molecule, 2 are IR active and 2 are IR inactive. Why? For example, in symmetrical stretching of CO2, in symmetrical stretching, remember when the molecule compressed at a time and the molecule uh, stretched at a time. And you know very well, the dipole movement of CO2 is originally 0. Permanent dipole movement of CO2 is 0. So, if permanent dipole movement of CO2 is 0, and during stretching also, there is no change in dipole movement. So, this molecule, this vibrational frequency cannot show any spectrum. It become IR inactive. So, we can say that symmetric stretching of CO2 molecule is IR inactive. But what happens when asymmetrical stretching is there? The permanent dipole movement is 0. But during this asymmetrical vibration, this molecule is going to show some change in dipole movement. That's why we are saying that the condition for IR activity is change in dipole movement. So, if the molecule is having permanent dipole movement, it is IR active. But if the molecule is having permanent dipole movement 0, but there is change in dipole movement during excitation, then also the molecule show IR activity. So, this asymmetric stretching of CO2 molecule is IR active in nature. Likewise, bending vibration of CO2 molecule are IR active. So, there are four theoretical fundamental vibration we have just calculated. But out of these four, two vibrations are IR active. The symmetrical stretching vib vibration is IR inactive, while asymmetrical stretching vibration is IR active and bending vibration are also IR active. So, whenever the spectrum is formed, we can observe that two major sharp peak in IR spectrum during excitation. Now, after calculating the type of vibration, after understanding type of vibration and calculating number of vibration, a spectrum have been generated. We can study the spectrum of the IR region. So, the spectrum something look like this, look like this. For the sake of simplicity, one can divide this spectrum into two major reason. One reason is known as functional group reason, which is having major peak 4000 to 1400 centimeter inverse, major peak, because this reason shows peak of functional group only. So, if the molecule is CH3CHO, here the functional group is aldehyde, C double bond O. This functional group peak is found, we can found this functional group peak at this reason. That's why this reason is known as functional group reason. So, after studying number of vibration and types of vibration, when we found spectrum 
with the help of IR spectrophotometer for the sake of simplicity we divide this spectrum into two major reasons. So, if we need to know only functional group it is very easy because in functional group reason one or two major peak we can obtain depending upon the number of functional group present in a molecule. And this particular reason is basically helpful in determining various functional group in a compound. So, if this functional group is formed or not. So, if unknown compound is there, we can find which functional group is there in the compound out of this functional group reason. And comparatively, it is easier to find this because it is having less number of peak in it and it is not very complex, it is simple. Some of the functional group peak you can observe and you can match your compound with these functional group peaks given in the book or journals. So, some you can see on the slide. The hydroxyl, whenever OH group is there in the molecule, the peak is about 3610 to 3640 centimeter inverse. So, if the compound is methanol like CH3OH, if the compound is C2H5OH, if the compound is C3H7OH, in all three molecules one can find the peak of OH group in functional group reason. We no need to study fingerprint reason at that time. If we want to calculate, if we want to know only the functional group. So, it is very helpful in determining functional group of a compound because each and every particular functional group is having a particular peak in this functional group reason. So, whenever we are going to find out that what is the functional group present in this unknown molecule or newly formed molecule, we can study this simple part of a spectrum which is known as functional group reason. But another reason is known as fingerprint reason. As name indicates, it is a fingerprint reason. It means for each and every molecule, likewise for every human being a fingerprint is different. For each and every molecule, minor to minor change can be observed, can be studied under this reason. This reason is very small, 1400 centimeter to 667 centimeter inverse. But this reason is very sensitive also. Minor to minor change occur in a molecule can be observed, can be studied in this particular fingerprint reason. That is why this is known as fingerprint. Although if two molecules have similar peak in this fingerprint reason, Undoubtedly, we can say that these two molecules are similar to each other. These are not different compound if fingerprint reason are same. Likewise, for a human being, we, we are saying we found that the fingerprint of a human being matches with the fingerprint of some human. We are saying that these are they are same human. Likewise, in a molecule also, if the fingerprint reason peaks are similar, we can say that these two molecules are sim, uh, similar to each other. So, any compound. If we want to distinguish any characteristic between two compounds such as cis and trans, aromatic and aliphatic or any uh, long chain molecule and short chain molecule, this kind of characteristic we can obtain out of fingerprint reason. No two molecules will have the similar peak in this fingerprint reason. The IR spectra of unknown substance compared with the spectra of possible substance we can obtain. It means if unknown substance is there and I got a IR spectra and I have some prediction that this may be the possible structure. So, I can prove with the help of fingerprint reason that my prediction is right and yes, this compound is formed. This fingerprint reason is totally different in every molecule and this is very complex because in this, in this reason, both various stretching and bending vibration occurs and various stretching and bending vibration one need to study when we are studying fingerprint reason. Fingerprint reason is associated with complex vibrational and rotational energy changes and characteristic of the molecule as a whole. It means we can say it is the identification of a molecule. A molecule if it is showing that this is the fingerprint reason of the molecule, if you are having fingerprint of any molecule. I, IR spectra of fingerprint of any molecule, you can say that this is the identification of the that particular molecule. So, if you are not having any other information of that particular molecule 
and if you have a fair knowledge of studying fingerprint region of a molecule, you can find out that which molecule is given or you are having the spectra of this particular molecule. So, in this lecture, we have studied what is IR spectroscopy, what is the basic principle of IR spectroscopy, how vibrational energy changes can be recorded to form a spectrum and when the spectrum is generated, we can calculate that how many peaks are there, it means how many number of vibrations are there. Theoretically, we can calculate using the formula 3n minus 5 for linear molecule and 3n minus 6 for non-linear molecule and then we match with the match with the peaks given already in the notebooks and then we have studied different various types of vibration to understand that why these different peaks are coming in the spectra and then we understood the uh, application and nature of two reason, two major broad reason, functional group reason and fingerprint reason, out of which functional group reason is important to study functional group of the compound and fingerprint reason is important for studying minor to minor changes occurred in two molecules. So, if two molecules have distinguished feature, it can easily be identified by fingerprint reason. So, here is the lecture of IR spectroscopy. Thank you very much.